Shorts and the White Sox and Manchester City getting us underway with the lime and blue strips across their shirt and the ball immediately goes all the way back to their goalkeeper Edison so a reminder of the team news for Manchester City one change a big one though Erling Haaland back into Manchester City starting 11 and the ball is immediately off his head and out of play on the far left hand side for a Southampton throw and for Saints after that defeat against West Ham United last week when they were pretty poor they've made four changes Ruben Sayers has brought in Maitland Niles Bella Kotchup who we didn't think would be fit today but plays Alcaraz the midfielder and Sulemana to give them a bit of pace in the wide areas and Saints with the ball on the halfway line and it is with Lavia who lifts it forward on the left hand side and out for a Manchester City throw so Southampton nil Manchester City nil let's immediately get an early feel for what's happening at the rugby it's the Champions Cup Exeter against Stormers Chris Jones and we've just got going Exeter nil Stormers nil I was in Dublin last night Chris to see Leinster ease into the semi-finals they've been joined by mighty Toulouse those two meet in three weeks time another South African side is in action here in the Stormers they've had a dodgy preparation with their travel from Cape Town huge opportunity then for Exeter to salvage their season with a place in the last four but the Chiefs had to go to the well themselves against Montpellier last time out nil nil we've played a minute as it is here as well minute and a half in Southampton and Manchester City we've talked about Saints's predicament what about Manchester City well they begin the evening eight points behind Arsenal but they do have a game in hand over the Gunners and of course Arsenal are playing tomorrow against Liverpool that's part of our Premier League Sunday on five live leads against Crystal Palace as well tomorrow afternoon so, Danny, they have the chance to put a bit of pressure on the Gunners at least. Yeah, have that opportunity to apply some pressure. Pep Guardiola knows it can be no slip-ups from his team at this stage of the season with a points lead that Arsenal have. I think that's reflected in the starting lineup as well of Man City. Could have easily rotated with a big Champions League game coming up next week, but he hasn't. He's gone very strong. Never nice if you had Southampton defender seeing Hurling Haaland back on the team sheet as well. So look, there could be no slip-ups for Man City. They know the job that they need to do here. Southampton have a free kick here. 15 yards inside Manchester City's half. On the left, sent in by Ward Prowse and headed away by Manchester City up towards the halfway line. Collected by Bella Kutchup for Saints. Out towards Alcaraz. Low ball across the six-yard box. Nobody there to meet it. And then a foul by Sulemana on the far side. It will be a Manchester City free kick in their right-back area. Bundled into the back of Gundogan did Sulemana but that's positive from Saints it certainly is fantastic delivery from Alcaraz out on his right hand side ball played out to him touch out of his feet and he just whips it into that kind of corridor of uncertainty in front of the goalkeeper behind that Man City back line the ball was almost too good Chris in the end it just wasn't a Southampton player that could almost catch up really but right start from Southampton that's what they need to do no goals played, three minutes in, we're on Five Live, we're on BBC Sounds as well, let's just give you the teams in full. Southampton, Bazunu in goal, Maitland-Niles, Bednarek, Bella Kotchup and Walker-Peters at the back, Lavia, Ward-Prowse and Alcaraz in midfield, Sulemana and Elianussi in the wide areas and Theo Walcott up front, though at least for now Walcott seems to be uh, playing a role on this right-hand side. Yeah, there. just looking at Southampton, it was more of a 4-4-2 in their previous game against West Ham, I think it would be suicidal to continuing that system up against Man City who we know love to kind of condense that midfield area and put overloads into that central area with that kind of box four midfield that they play with with John Stones just kind of playing inverted from that fullback position so it just looks like it's almost a 4-3-3 walk off the right hand side Sulimana slightly off the left Alcaraz through the middle and Elio Nussi is almost tucked in on the left hand side almost making a midfield three in there for Southampton I think he'll be the one on the defensive side we'll be looking to see where Kevin De Bruyne is and he'll be trying to latch on to him as much as possible to help Walker Peters out on that left hand side the ball at the moment is inside Manchester City's penalty area with one of their three centre halves Ruben Diaz it's Edison in goal for Pep Guardiola's team Akanji, Diaz and Ake the three defenders Rodri and John Stones who has now been employed so successfully in that more defensive midfield role he was excellent against Liverpool last week in that 4-1 win, as were many others. And then Mares, Gundogan, De Bruyne and Grealish across midfield as a bit of pressure from Alcaraz is applied to 
Edison, the Manchester City goalkeeper, that is effectively dealt with. City bring it away. And obviously Erling Haaland up top. And here come Manchester City for the first time. Mara's on the right-hand side. And they've got the run here. Gundogan helping it on. Grealish in the box. Saved by Bazunu. And just out of the reach of De Bruyne, who was coming in at the far post. But the ball bounces over the top of his head. And Manchester City have it back again, 10 yards inside St. Tar. Yeah, I like what Southampton are trying to do out of possession. They're trying to press high. But that is the danger. Man City is so good in possession. They play right through the press, right from Edison up the other end. And they get out overload on this left-hand side. And Grealish just looks to open at his right foot, bending into that far corner. Bazuna with a smart save. Here's Grealish away from Maitland Niles, down towards the byline. Carried it a little too far in the end. Jack Grealish. And it's out of play for a Southampton goal kick. Nil-nil, five and a half minutes played. But good content so far. Yeah, it's been a good start from both teams. Southampton positive out of possession in particular they're looking to press high and try and force mistakes high up the pitch for Man City but that is the danger that is the conundrum when you come up against a team like Man City do you sit off allow them to dictate possession do you go and press high and then it's the fear of them playing through you with the quality that they have and that's exactly what they did there and Greenish should be disappointed he hasn't found that far, far corner with a finish He's been in brilliant form, hasn't he, of late, Jack Grealish, since Christmas. Three goals, five assists in the Premier League. Was exceptional again last week in that win over Liverpool. And Manchester City with possession in their back line with Diaz, who sends it out to the right-hand side for a Kanji. Over towards Mares on the far right-hand side. You won't miss him this evening with those bright pink boots on. And it's back with a Kanji and now Rodri, who turns and faces up the pitch just outside his own penalty area gives it to Ake on this left hand side and now Grealish with the hair bobbing along cutting in field 20 yards inside Southampton's half sends it from left to right bounces once controlled by Mares with his head and back in field for John Stones again really interesting to watch Stones tonight or the Barnsley Beckenbauer as he has been dubbed by Manchester City faithful yeah, not a problem for John Stones is it going into those central midfield areas he's always been a really kind of composed ball playing defender a different kind of role for him we've seen him playing right back a lot of the season more conventional right back but looks right at home playing in that kind of inverted full back position lifted into the penalty area just out of the reach of Grealish and out of play for a Southampton goal kick which is going to be taken by Gavin Bazunu who of course is a former Manchester City player himself he joined Man City from Shamrock Rovers just before his 17th birthday had a couple of loan spells was with Rochdale and Portsmouth in the EFL before Southampton paid 15 million pounds to bring him in in the yeah, summer always that added motivation as a player when you come up against one of your ex-teams and you'll be delighted to have made an early save he won't want to be too busy I got the feeling that he's going to be he's going to be really important player for Southampton Rodri's headed backwards Diaz had to scamper to get there before Charlie Alcaraz who certainly seems to be the furthest player forward for Southampton almost in that false nine position yeah it looks like he's on yeah as you mentioned there Chris false nine kind of position Walcott's just off the right Suleiman is hugging that left side it's almost a 4-3-3 three, three, and at times into a 4-4-2 four, four, with Suleiman looking to come centrally and, and help Alcaraz as well 23 points for Southampton from there 29 games so far in the Premier League as it's scuffed out of play by Ward Prowse on this near right hand side about half the pitch here at St Mary's is bathed in glorious late sunshine on what is a warm Easter weekend certainly here on the south coast and Manchester City have it with Ruben Diaz with the number three on his back the Portuguese international and then Akanji sends it all the way back to Manchester City's keeper Edison on this City team who have not dropped a Premier League point since that 1-1 draw with Nottingham Forest on the 18th of February. They haven't been beaten in the Premier League now for over two months when they lost at Spurs. They're clicking at the right time. The question is, are Arsenal going to slip to allow them to break through? Well, Arsenal ain't going anywhere, I know that. And they've had to step it up again, Man City, because of the form of Arsenal. It does look now that they're in kind of full flow, this new kind of system that Pep Guardiola's adopted. Here's Haaland, he's collected that loose header from Maitland-Niles. He's given it to Mares, who's now inside the box. Mares and the overlap from De Bruyne to the byline. The sliding challenge was a good one. And Walcott's able to at least stop pars partially part of the danger for Saints because Rodri has it again on that far right-hand side. Nil-nil, and we are moving up towards the 10th minute mark. And the issue 
with this new system that kind of Man City are playing. It seems like the players are well used to it now, but they obviously create that kind of midfield four box centrally, but they've still got the width as well with Grealish hugging the left, Mahrez hugging the right. They don't have, obviously, a flying fullback going past either of those two players, but they don't need it. It suits them down to the ground. The players are brilliant kind of in those 1v1 situations so good at kind of drifting past defenders so it just looks like this system now is really starting to work well and obviously you add Haaland back into the team with his goals and they're a difficult team to to stop they really are Ruben Sayers is right on the edge of his technical area the Southampton boss in a, a grey jumper and the long black trousers barking instructions to his players you feel he'll be doing that for 90 minutes to try and keep them in check Manchester City have the ball with Rodri, 15 yards inside Southampton's half. A little touch off by Stones to Mares, And the Algerian has De Bruyne further to his right hand side. He's working back in field, and then Rodri doesn't see the forward pass and goes backward towards Akanji. And now Diaz helps it on towards Ake on this left hand side. Ake towards Grealish. Grealish pulling it infield on his right boot giving it to Rodri but a movement from Mares on the far right hand side Rodri's found him impeccable pass as well Mares lifts it in left footed over Grealish's head and nodded behind by the Arsenal loney Ainsley Maitland Niles and Manchester City have a corner their first of the night 11 minutes in nil nil yeah positionally really good for Maitland Niles on the far post there well worked for Man City moving the ball left to right they get it into Mares in that kind of 1v1 situation he elects to cross deep to the far post but making Niles in the right position at the right time important defensive header so De Bruyne and Grealish on this short corner on this near left hand side going towards the chapel and right to left in this first half Manchester City De Bruyne's cross is closed down it's come to Mares, who's gone back to the halfway line for Ake who had to be quick with his pass because Suleimana was closing him down and he is quick and now De Bruyne drifting it in from the left and another piece of decent Southampton defending to get it away Rodri has it now Mares, 15 yards outside the box lifts it in again this time the downward header was from Bednarek and Southampton finally have the ball back can they hang on to it that's the question can they perhaps do something with it worked up towards Walcott there was a forward run from Alcaraz but Walcott couldn't see him and has opted to go back towards Jan Bednarek on the edge of his box. Yeah, and the counter attack is going to be really important for Southampton, but also they have to retain possession there. You see Walcott there, maybe it was an opportunity to counter attack, but just lacking bodies running past him. So he just selects to turn back out and keep the ball. And there's nothing wrong with that because at times you need to take or relieve the pressure off your defence by retaining possession, getting those passes in. And something for Alcaraz to chase. He got a little touch on it as well, Diaz just about with enough purchase on the ball to get it back towards Edison in all blue in front of the Manchester City travelling supporters over 3,000 of them on the south coast making their voices heard on this Saturday evening as well and City as ever patiently bring it forward with Diaz yeah what I would say is with Man City and how they play now defensively obviously they're playing with a back three and they don't kind of have those full backs either side so there are space in wide areas and in between those centre backs to exploit you look at that Liverpool goal last weekend the ball over the top and Jota making that running behind so you look at the forward line of Southampton they have players with pace so really important that on the counter attack they've got those runners going in behind and you know don't be scared to to then play those longer balls over the top it's much more difficult for the likes of Diaz and Ake and the Kanji now to cover those spaces on the counter attack City still with the ball on the edge of their own penalty area looking for their eighth win in a row in all competitions this evening the last three games alone they've scored 17 goals Manchester City seven against Leipzig in the Champions League six past Burnley in the FA Cup and then just the four against Liverpool last week in the Premier League yeah they really are purring as a side business end of the season they've obviously been in this situation many a time normally top of the league but they're chasing Arsenal down I think they realise that they've had to kind of step their game up and that's certainly what they're doing here's Grealish from Manchester City 10 yards outside Hampton's box left of centre for De Bruyne whose cross is closed down by Maitland-Niles and it is another Manchester City corner but we are moving towards the quarter hour mark Danny Gabidon and as of yet there is no way through for the Premier League champions yeah, I think that's what Ruben says would have been saying to his players before kick-off you, know, you take the game in stages almost let's get through the first 15 20 minutes unscathed can we counter attack well and create a couple of chances ourselves 
This one's coming in directly from De Bruyne towards the far post. Bazunu with a really firm punch. Forced back goalwards by Gundogan and blocked by several white and red shirts in front of him. And the ball's gone spinning away on the far right-hand side for another Manchester City corner. Yeah, good delivery into the box. Positive goalkeeping by Bazunu, but he can only get the punch to the edge of the 18-yard box. And Gundogan lets fly on the volley but there's lots of Southampton bodies there in the way to block oh that short corner went to De Bruyne and Sulemana took it off him and Ake's the only one who can get back there now Sulemana against Ake on he goes he's into the box Sulemana he's run it too much and Edison dives in on his feet pushes it away and then back to his feet the Manchester City goalkeeper to collect it oh the first bit's brilliant from Sulemana he nicks in anticipates wins the ball and he's a long way back he's in his own half but it's 1v1 against Ake and he just needed to keep running at pace I don't think Ake would have caught him he slows down he allows him to get back and then he tries to put the afterburners back on again and then his touch is heavy as he gets inside the 18 yard box and the chance goes he allows Edison to come out what a big opportunity that is for Southampton he's the quickest player at the World Cup in Qatar why did he slow Campbell down for them? Sulemana. I don't know why he just didn't put the afterburners on because he had the chance to go back past Ake who was backtracking himself anyway yeah, he had a yard on Ake already he just needed to keep running full throttle I don't think I would have caught him and then just let fly with a strike but for some reason he slows down he lets him catch up then he puts the power on again goes past him again now he's inside the 18-yard box and then his touch is really heavy just didn't look comfortable comfortable confident in that situation there Road pass by Rodri, out of play, out of the reach of Grealish. Southampton throw, Saints nil, Manchester City nil. Let's see how things are happening in the early stages of the rugby. Exeter Stormers, Chris Jones. First points to Exeter as they look for a place in the Champions Cup semi-finals. Cracking score as well. Ollie Woodburn streaking down the left. They came back the other way. Joe Simmons' perfect cross kick was gobbled up by fullback Tom Wyatt to send Sandy Park to its feet. Exeter 7, Stormers nil after 15. Cheers, Chris. Two more games in the Premier League tomorrow. Leeds against Crystal Palace from two. Liverpool against the Premier League our leaders Arsenal from half past four all part of our coverage on five live Premier League Sunday and we still wait for our first goal of the night in our half past five game here at St Mary's Southampton 20th in the Premier League and they've seen three of their relegation rivals win today West Ham with that victory at Fulham Bournemouth with a huge three points away at Leicester City and Wolves beating Frank Lampard and Chelsea in his first game back with his beloved club yeah but they've also seen Forest lose and Everton lose as well so incentive for Southampton to get something from this game and what a chance that was for Suleimana how many big chances how many more big chances for Southampton get like that and he still had a lot to do look he's running from in his own half but he has to get the strike away the minimum he should do there is get the strike away and, and work the goalkeeper doesn't even do that his touch is really poor 18 minutes in, nil-nil. Gundogan's crossfield pass stopped by Walker Peters on his chest, and then back to Bazunu, who was inside his six-yard box, and the ball was coming at him at a bit of a pace, so he had to clear that away quickly. And it's out for a Manchester City throw on the far right-hand side, nil-nil, and City going from right to left in this first half in their change strip of the green with the blue sash across the front and the blue shorts and the lime green sock lime would you go with that would you go with lime Danny yeah, I think that's a fair assessment Chris here's Gundogan cut out by Ward Prowse came in nicked the ball off him and then back to Bazunu who calmly plays it out to Armel Belakotchup who we weren't expecting to see today the Southampton centre half he dislocated his shoulder again against Tottenham here just before the international break he did it just before the World Cup as well Bella Kotchup we didn't think he was going to play but he's one of four Saints changes from Ruben Sayers today Maitland Niles Alcaraz and Sulemana have also come in and is Sulemana racing on that left hand side there he did show his pace and there also did Diaz show his experience to slide in and get it off him. Outstanding tackle, he really is. Because if he skips by him, Suleimana there, Man City, you're in trouble. Had to get that tackle right, but that's Diaz coming across almost into a right back position from that central position where he's playing. So there are gaps in wide areas for Southampton to exploit. And Saints have got it again here. Bit of a roar from St Mary's there at least posing a question or two to Manchester City suleiman has got it left side of the box low ball in Diaz on the deck as he got it back to suleiman to clear it away back on the edge of the area back in towards Alcarez out of his reach 
and Edison lets it run past his left-hand post and behind for a goal kick. Yeah, good little spell this for Southampton, it really is. Sulemano initially with a low ball across the six-yard box, which is dealt with again by Diaz, but he recycled possession well. Alcaraz just looking to find Roselia Nussi, sorry, whips a ball in, looking to find the run of Alcaraz, just slightly too high. Ake does a good job of kind of tracking the run as well. Well, Manchester City are not necessarily having it their own way so far tonight, and I think many expected them to roll Southampton over tonight from the very start, but it is a, a real game at St Mary's in a real atmosphere as well. It is a sellout here this evening. And the Southampton voices are getting louder by the minute as well as the yeah, ball goes all the way back to Bazuni. I think that positivity gets the crowd going as well, doesn't it? I think you look at the situation Southampton are in, how their home form has been. Man City coming here, were an excellent team as we know. It'd be very easy for Southampton to kind of sit back and be negative and allow Man City to dictate the game. But that hasn't been the case. I think the balance so far has been very good for them. They've looked to press high when they can. But they also realise as well, we've got to sit deep at times and get men behind the ball and make things difficult. So the balance so far has been really good. Guardiola looking a little irritated as Nathan Ake's attempted pass goes out of play for a Southampton throw right in front of the technical area that Guardiola is currently strutting around him with his hands in his pocket and his black turtleneck jumper. In fact, he's all in black today. Pep Guardiola with the sun mm. shining off the top of his head. A little bit warm for black, Chris, what do you think? <laughs> it is a touch. We were saying we weren't sure whether to put the coats on today or not, but I think as soon as that sun disappears, it could get particularly chilly in here. Winds tends to whip around the top of this stadium as well. Yeah, just looking at Ruben Saez as well, who's in his technical area and he's waving his fist about at his players as well. I think he's really pleased with the start from his team. Been on the front foot, really positive. They've got the crowd behind them one or two half chances already it's the third different Southampton manager to face Manchester City this season Ruben says it was Ralph Hasenhutl at the Etihad in October when Manchester City beat Saints 4-0 it was Nathan Jones here when Saints beat Man City in the League Cup 2-0 in January that really was the high point of uh, an otherwise pretty forgettable period for Nathan Jones and for Saints and now it is Say as tonight as Southampton look to try and get themselves off the bottom of the Premier League table. Here is Maitland Niles. We're at the halfway point in the first half. It's nil-nil. And now Alcarez cutting in fields. Gundawan with a little foot in. Saints get it back with Bednarek. And this is the German, Bella Kotchup. Goes long, looks for Walcott, who's run the wrong side of Ake. He's down towards the corner flag on this near right-hand side, Walcott. Ake's gone all the way over there with him and is touched tight to Theo Walcott, the former Arsenal man who's got his back at the moment to the rest of plays. Looking around, he's trying to get the ball out of his seat. He's got it to Maitland Niles, who tried to lift it away from Gundawan. He read the situation well, Kai okay, Gundawan. And then Manchester City have lost it again. Saints have got it back on this right-hand side with Maitland Niles, who is looking up and playing a ball five yards backwards towards Ward Prowse and then back on the halfway line with Bednar. Good from Bella Kotchup, that ball head up looking to play the ball in behind. Walcott the willing runner. Yes, they're not able to really manufacture a chance off it but it gets the team up the pitch. They've managed to pin Man City back in and around their 18 yard box. Nick Niles with the throw, tried to send it back Ward Prowse's direction, taken off him and then a sliding challenge from Bednarek on Haaland who we haven't seen too much of so far in the first 23 and a half minutes at St Mary's it's out of play for a Man City goal kick that's what tends to happen with him though doesn't it don't see too much of him then bam <laughs> scores a hat-trick as he has done in his last two games yeah he's a player you need to watch played. at all times Pep Guardiola will be happy to see him back from injury huge games coming up 42 Premier League goals this season for Erling Haaland, 28 in the Premier League, and that's more than Southampton in total, yeah. who have 23. Crazy numbers, really is, and you look at the Southampton team, not too many goals in it. Linusi won this season, Walcott won, Suleiman hasn't scored this season, Alcaraz has got a couple. Ward Prowse top goal scorer with seven, so somebody's going to need to step up for Southampton between now and the end of the season, really catch fire and stick the ball in the back of the net. Bit of a problem here for Jack Grealish, who was down on his haunches after an aerial collision with Jan Bednarek, the Southampton centre-half. He's back on his 
feet now. Let's head back to the rugby, the Champions Cup at Sandy Park. Exeter Stormers, Chris Jones. Second Exeter try. They're playing some great stuff. The ever-involved Jack Knoll has dotted down under the post. Easy conversion. Travel problems meant the Stormers didn't arrive in the UK from Cape Town until Wednesday morning. Will they have anything in the tank to come back? Great start, Exeter, as they bid for the semi-finals. Exeter 14, Stormers nil. Still 0-0 between Southampton and Manchester City here and still play hasn't got back underway after that injury for Jack Grealish. So let's head to Augusta, the Masters, with John Murray. Yes, an early mover in the third round here is Justin Rose, who's picked up a couple of shots, 20-foot uh, birdie at the first, and then he's also birdied the par five second. So Justin Rose picking up a couple of shots in his third round. He's now six under par in a tie for fourth and six shots behind the leader, Brooks Kepka, who tees off in round about 10 minutes. John, thanks very much. We'll have coverage from the Masters from five past eight on five live sports extra once the British Swimming Championships coverage is done which begins from six o'clock tonight and then of course full coverage from nine o'clock here on five live as well so Southampton nil Manchester City nil and play back underway with Manchester City in possession ten yards inside their own half long ball forward looking for Haaland brought down exquisitely from Bella Koch up despite the presence of the Norwegian given back to him by Romeo Lavia, another former Manchester City player, of course, has been some talk that Pep Guardiola might like to bring him back already. So impressive has he been in his first season, or first full season in the Premier League. And Southampton have a throw. Far left-hand side, 0-0, nil -nil, with 26 minutes in. Danny Gabidon. I'm not quite sure why you would want to go back home, Romeo <laughs> Lavia, playing week in and week out now here at Southampton and developing. I'm not sure if that would happen if he went back to Man City, but Forming a good kind of move through your partnership in there alongside James Ward, James Ward Price. I guess there might be a position that may be vacated through Ilkay Gundawan because he is out of contract at the end of the season and there has been a lot of speculation about him potentially joining Barcelona this summer. So maybe the, the slot will become available. It's a difficult one if you're a young player at Man City and you have seen a few players. Lavia is one of them, obviously. Jaden Sancho is another who feel they have to maybe move so they don't see a pathway through. We've seen Phil Foden come through as a youngster and now young Rico Lewis, but not easy if you're a young player there to, to break through into this star-studded team. Foul on Maitland-Niles went careering into Jack Grealish. Manchester City free kick on this near left-hand side. And immediately they work it out to the far right with Mares. He doesn't get to the ball though, it's taken off him by Kyle Walker-Peters who is playing in that left-back role today to accommodate the fact that Maitland-Niles is playing in the right-back berth with Roman Perro dropping out of the team. One of four changes from Southampton from the defeat against West Ham last week. And they were poor, weren't they, at London Stadium. It would have been a real concern for Ruben Sayers, having seen his team offer such an encouraging response to get that 3-3 draw here with Tottenham. Yeah, this has been a good reaction from them, though. I thought you know, they had enough possession against West Ham, but just didn't do enough with the possession that they had, didn't really offer too much of a threat. Certainly looks like there's a bit more athleticism, energy to their performance here today. One big chance of peace, really, that Grealish chance for Man City. Suleimanu should have done better. Here's Haaland trying to barge his way through a couple on the halfway line. And enough uh, on the pass from Bella Koch up to get it back to Bazunu. He lifts it up towards the halfway line where Alcaraz jumps. He's beaten to it in the air by Ruben Diaz and then Akanji firm in his challenge to pass it on towards Mares on that far right hand side so Southampton nil Manchester City nil and they tend to show much mercy when they're playing teams at the bottom of the Premier League Manchester City Pep Guardiola and Manchester City have faced sides at the foot of the table nine times they've won them all they've scored 34 goals and they have never conceded one in fixtures against sides who have begun 20th in the Premier League. Ruthless. <laughs> That's the word I would use for that. As ever, De Bruyne trying to poke it through for Haaland, stopped by Southampton's Polish centre-half, Jan Bednarek. And this is Lavia up to the halfway line for Charlie Alcaraz, who scored the last time Southampton won here against Leicester City. Now Sulemana trying to be busy and get between two Manchester City players, which he has, and then a couple of tricks. Oh, he's gone away from Akanji to the byline. Sulemana with the pullback, nobody there. It was between two Southampton players, but they keep the ball on the left-hand side with Walker-Peters, who lost his balance. He felt he should have had a free kick, but 
He went down in stages and now Manchester City might be able to break on Southampton. Nil-nil, but here comes Mares. Mares on the right-hand side. Not too many options up ahead of him at the moment. So just slows things down and gives it to Gundogan. Yeah, in the end, Southampton did a good job of getting bodies back there because they had a lot of bodies caught upfield from that that attack that De broke down De Bruyne to Grealish edge of the box he's shouting for handball he's kicked the ball towards Ward Prowse's hand the two of them were stood so close together though Danny I don't know if that was going to be given here they come again Grealish in the box low ball across and stopped by Bednarek and cleared away by Ward Prowse out of play for a Manchester City throw on the left and there are one or two Man City players who are surrounding referee Rob Jones asking for a penalty I don't think he's going to get that one as you say Chris standing right next to each other Grealish inside the 18 yard box he's looking to dink a ball down the side of Ward Price his right arm is by his side it doesn't move out towards the ball there's no way this one's it's going to be checked obviously but I can't see this one being given John Brooks is the VAR today Rob Jones the man in charge in the blue jersey it's his 20th Premier League game of the season for what it's worth he's awarded the joint most penalties in the league this season last time he refereed Manchester City he gave them one at Palace back in March and indeed here at St Mary's last month against Leicester he gave Southampton a penalty as well which James Ward-Prowse missed it was saved by Danny Ward but they've had a quick look at that it is no Manchester City penalty it is a throw though which Jack Grealish is going to take on this left hand side to Haaland who's down by the byline and his cross has come off the shins of Ward Prowse and it's out of play for a Manchester City throw as we've moved past the half hour mark but it is still nil-nil yeah good from Suleimana just before that penalty shout again Ruben says just demanding a runner in behind he's the one to do that lovely little nutmegs on a kanji doesn't come to anything in the end but to Bruyne lifted up to the far post headed back across goal and into the hands of Bazunu which was a relatively straightforward one for the Irishman to collect that nod back from Ilkay Gundogan and he looks the one Suleiman on the counter attack with his pace so Phantom fans just wanting Bazunu there to do things a little bit quicker but like I say really important to have that balance of counter attacking quickly on Man City but also knowing when to kind of slow things down and just give your team a breather which he did there well and a free kick for Southampton Sulemana having his shirt held on to on the halfway line it's a club record signing 22 million pounds Southampton paid for the Ghanaian to bring him in from Wren in January hasn't started the last couple of games but Ruben Sayers has seen enough of an impact from him coming off the bench against Tottenham and West Ham to reinstate him to his starting lineup today yeah, he's looked lively he's just that end product with him had a great chance earlier in the game he's run almost the length of the pitch and didn't get his shot away his touch deserted him but he's predominantly playing off that left hand side but he's worked all the way across the front three really we've seen him pop up on the right hand side as well back we go to Exeter Stormers Chris Jones no, it's a dream half hour this full Exeter Chiefs Chris they've got another try their third this time Ollie Woodburn converted the game by Joe Simmons the Stormers look stunned the Chiefs are storming into the Champions Cup semi-finals they lead 21-0 with eight to go till the break thanks Chris and the coverage on Sports Extra of the British Swimming Championships has just got underway John Hunt Karen Pickering and Molly Renshaw your team there in Sheffield as another Southampton free kick is awarded this time for a foul on Romeo Lavia by Jack Grealish and they're able to stifle play Saints when they need to yeah, it's been very good so far defensively looks solid that kind of midfield three with Alianusi just kind of tucked in off, off left hand side have done a good job of retaining possession but also good defensive work and they've limited Man City really only to that Jack Grealish chance good save from Bazunu. it's the voice of Danny Gavidon former Premier League defender with West Ham United Queen's Park Rangers and Crystal Palace nil-nil between Southampton and Manchester City at St Mary's elsewhere today Manchester United beat Everton by two goals to nil in the early kickoff there were wins for Aston Villa who beat Nottingham Forest Newcastle who came from behind to beat Brentford 2-1 West Ham responding to that lashing by Newcastle in the week with a win over Fulham Bournemouth with a big win at Leicester City as Southampton come forward with Walcott down the right hand side the pass is too much on it Diaz has gone back to Edison he very calmly lifts it out to Ake in that left back position and he clears it away first time but only as far as Ward Prowse and then Manchester City work it back as a foul on Gundogan by Alcaraz 
elsewhere in the Premier League. Spurs 2, Brighton 1. We saw Roberto De Zerbi and Christian Stellini sent off for a technical area scuffle. And Wolves 1-0 winners over Chelsea in Frank Lampard's first game back at Stamford Bridge. Plenty to talk about tonight on 6.06 with Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage. We will let you know when the lines are open. You need to write down the number now, 08085 909 693. Danny, what have you made of Manchester City so far? We're 35 minutes in, so 10 minutes before half-time. Is this their, their normal fluent attacking self? I wouldn't say they're quite up to full speed yet, but you know, they can sometimes be like this Man City and then you feel you've got your f foothold in the game and then suddenly someone comes up with a bit of quality and you find yourselves 1-0 down. So I wouldn't quite say they're firing on all cylinders. John Stones is going to get a yellow card here. He's claiming he won the ball, but I think what has perhaps caught the attention of referee Rob Jones as he dived in there was the manner in which he went in for that challenge on Alcaraz because he sort of leapt in and it's a bit of a chop really isn't it from Stones yeah a little bit of a scissors from John Stones the right foot and then the left foot kind of comes around does eventually make contact with a bit of the ball but takes Alcaraz out of the game first been used in that new control midfielder role as uh, Pep Guardiola might call it John Stones did of course miss five games in February with a hamstring problem but has been an integral part of Manchester City's team since then it's been used as a right back in the City lineup this season as well and this is another chance maybe for Southampton with the quality of a, a Ward Prowse set piece to ask a question of Manchester City second in the Premier League table eight points behind Arsenal ahead of kickoff Arsenal against Liverpool tomorrow live on five live Southampton free kick just short of halfway inside Manchester City's half. Ward Prowse has gone short for Maitland Niles. Maitland Niles has cut back onto his left boot to full Gundawan. Then he's lifted it in and he's put too much on it, Maitland Niles. The Arsenal Loney and it's out for a Manchester City goal kick, 0 0. Yeah, not one from the training ground, that. Just get the ball into the box. The quality that James Ward Prowse possesses. I'm not sure why he's playing that short to Maitland Niles and then he's not quite sure what to do with it. Drags it back onto his left foot and by the time he's whipped that ball into the eight-yard box. Man City have just pushed that kind of line up and nobody's able to get on the end of it. Made his 400th Southampton appearance last week at West Ham United, James Ward-Prowse. And of course, the next time he scores from a, a direct free kick, as he so often does, he will equal David Beckham's Premier League record, which is 19 goals from direct set pieces yeah I'm sure it's something Pep Guardiola spoke about before the game to his players about giving silly free kicks around that area because it's almost inevitability when he's standing over the ball in those kind of situations so often it's the back of the net or works the goalkeeper there's Haaland with the blonde hair out to Grealish left hand angle of the penalty area tried to play it into the box with the outside of his right boot but the offside flag is up against the England international anyway so Southampton with a free kick on the edge of their own penalty area. Yeah, I think we have to give a lot of credit to Southampton how they've kind of started this game. Still our 38 minutes gone now. And so you haven't quite got up to full speed and a lot of that's to do with Southampton and how they've gone about things. I'm really positive from them. Pep Guardiola throwing his arms around down in the technical area. He's won nine of his 13 Premier League games against Southampton. The one defeat that he suffered was here at St Mary's back in 2020. Here comes City, low ball into the near post, cut out well by Bednarek, chucked himself towards it. There were a couple of Manchester City players lurking behind him, including Erling Haaland, and it's behind for a City corner. Yeah, good defender from Bednarek. John Stones, good delivery into the box and a more of a conventional full-back position there, whips the ball into the near post, but Bednarek, good positioning. So from the right-hand side, the left boot of Mares in swinger. Diaz was there, beaten to it in the air, on the edge of the penalty area with De Bruyne and then nodded back for Ake who knew that Sulemana was lurking around him so he didn't want to take any chances Nathan Ake and he goes all the way back to Edison the Manchester City goalkeeper whose gloves and boots uh, very fetchingly are matching today De Bruyne sweeping it forward Haaland's in first touch let him down not often you can say that the ball bounces eventually into the grasp of Gavin Bazunu, the Southampton goalkeeper but Southampton hearts would have been in mouths the first time they've really looked for him that 
Haaland running behind. Fantastic ball from De Bruyne. If he gets that down, then he's probably looking to just lob the ball over the top of Bazuni, who was caught in no man's land. No man's land. A little bit, sorry. But just looked a little bit rusty there with his first touch. Not able to get it down. Javier working it towards Walker Peters on the left hand side. Nil nil. And there are five minutes of the first half to play. Here at St Mary's on Five Live, we're live on BBC Sounds. De Bruyne over his shoulder, first time towards Grealish. And now Grealish, who has it halfway inside Southampton's half, on the left-hand side, couple of players around him. De Bruyne on the overlap, cross took a deflection, took it into Haaland's path, and he's headed it wide of the post. And some of the Manchester City fans thought that was in. The angle was really tight for Erling Haaland. And there is not, yet at least, a 43rd goal in all competitions for the Norwegian. i tell you what. Chris, that ball from De Bruyne is just ridiculous. He's got eyes in the back of his head. I don't know how he sees that. He's not even facing his teammate there. The ball's coming in at kind of around mid-waist tight and he just helps it on first time to Grealish. I don't know how he sees the pass, let alone executes it. Sets Grealish away, then his left-hand side. Deflected cross to that far post and Haaland just climbing over the back of Ward Prowse, not able to direct the header on target. The fact it was De Bruyne as well who played the cross, having initially played the pass for Grealish, he really got going on the overlap there to support that Manchester City attack. And that is one of their better opportunities, Manchester City, in this first half. It is still Saints nil, Man City nil, and you just wonder whether Southampton might be ruminating on that earlier chance for Hamildine Sulemana, who went through one-on-one -on -one with Nathan Ake and in the end showed too much of the ball to City's goalkeeper Edison. Yeah, well, he'd done him. He'd done him twice. Had a couple of yards on him. It's almost like he wanted to, to beat him again. Slowed down, then went past him again. And then it was that final touch before he was going to get the shot away, which gets away from him. And the chance went. Best chance of the game for Southampton. One win in their last 11 at home, Southampton here against Leicester City. It came in March. It's the only clean sheet as well that they've got all season at St Mary's. But their record generally has been weak. They've got the fewest wins, the fewest points, and they've conceded more goals than any other of the 19 teams in the Premier League in their own backyards. But still nil nil against Manchester City, who come again with Grealish down this left hand side. He's quick enough to keep it in, but Maitland Niles stood to his task, went back with Grealish, and in his stride, pokes it away from Jack Grealish, but at the cost of a Manchester City corner. Yeah, has that recovery pace. Maitland Niles, ball over the top, Grealish gets in, but has that pace to get back and recover and make the challenge. So Manchester City going from right to left in this first half. We have two and a half minutes left of it and it's nil nil it's Grealish's corner which is very deep towards the far post Stones heads it back in and Ward Prowse first time clears it away Ake then loops one back out towards Stones on that far right hand side it's his downward header and stepping in front of Ruben Diaz was Maitland-Niles who then very cheekily cuts back in field on his right foot and then sweeps it up to Walcott who tries to nod it down and then run beyond Kevin De Bruyne and once upon a time Walcott might have reached that but the legs aren't quite what they were and it's back with Edison yeah not quite as sharp as he feel Walcott but could have actually got that ball down he had James Ward-Prowse in support there was space out on his right hand side for Southampton to counter attack he tries to nod the ball on and get the other side of De Bruyne which was never really going to happen he's making his third Premier League start in a row Theo Walcott for Southampton and that has not happened in two years Nil nil. Southampton on the charge now with Elianissi on that left hand side has support in either direction. This is Sulemana who is so fleet of foot and the ball is worked on towards Lavia who's out of his feet. Romeo Lavia back onto his left foot and back out to that left hand side. Low ball across goal out of the reach of everybody. Alcaraz is the closest to it and it's behind for a Manchester City goal kick but again Southampton are putting those balls in the right areas. Someone's got to tap that in. It's brilliant play from Southampton. The retention of the ball. You can see where the space is for them in those wide areas to exploit, and they're doing so. The pass from Lavia back into Sulemano is an excellent one as well, and he's just on an angle. I don't know whether he's trying to play that across the six-yard box or just bend it low into that far corner. He doesn't either with it in the end. Intervention from Ake. It was needed as well, because otherwise Walcott might have been able to start Southampton's latest break. 
And Manchester City with Grealish have very quickly moved up into Southampton territory. De Bruyne has crossed on the left. Gundogan on the spin. Now with Grealish, who's 30 yards from goal. Dead centre looking around. Sees the gap. Sees De Bruyne. Right-footed cross. Haaland's header. And Manchester City in front. And it's that combination of De Bruyne and Haaland again. And City strike just before half-time. Erling Haaland with his 43rd goal in all competitions. And how many times have we seen a City goal like that? Clipped him from De Bruyne. Downward header from Haaland. It is Southampton nil. Manchester City 1. Well, it's what Man City do. They just have that quality. They're not quite been at top speed. But this is what they do. They can just kill you in an instant. Southampton almost scoring the other end. Man City right back down the other. The cross from De Bruyne is right on the money. Haaland in a central position, no more than five or six yards out. And he sticks it right on his head. He just pulls off the back or in between both centre-backs, Bednarek and Bela Kocuk. They don't know where he is, they switch off. Gets in front of Bela Kocuk there and it's a simple header for him in the end, but the delivery from De Bruyne is outstanding. It's right on the money and he's heading that just inside the six-yard box. Bazunu's not able to come and collect. 20, it's an easy header. 29, easy header 29 Premier League goals for Erling Haaland. We haven't got underway just yet, so I just wonder whether they may be having a, a check perhaps on a potential offside, so we'll keep you updated with that. Uh, but if it does stand, it would also mean that Kevin De Bruyne has his 100th Premier League assist. And the goal does stand, and a blue flare as well has gone off in the away end over towards our right-hand side. Impeccable timing for that Manchester City goal to arrive as well, Danny Gabidon. Yeah. I think that's 14 assists for the season for Kevin De Bruyne. It's ridiculous again. People saying he's not quite been at it this season, but the delivery is outstanding. Puts it right on the money. So nonchalant as well. The way he just kind of flicks it into the 18-yard box, just pops up on this left-hand side, and that'll really hurt Southampton because they've probably been the better of the two sides. But the quality that Man City have, you, you can't switch off for a second. You have to have full concentration defensively. Bella Kocic just switches off. He doesn't know where Haaland is. You have to know with the quality that De Bruyne has. He's going to stick it in any area that he wants. He's going to pick someone out. It's exactly what he does, and it's a simple header. Smoke at the moment, wafting across the pitch. It's giving us a, a hazy view of the game at the moment. There's an acrid smell in the air at St Mary's as well. And a very familiar situation for Manchester City and indeed Southampton in terms of here at St Mary's for both to find themselves in City in front and there is the half-time whistle so as it stands Manchester City are cutting the gap to five points on the Premier League leaders Arsenal as Erling Haaland removes the hairband and lets the hair flow the goal's flowing for him again right on half-time De Bruyne's assist Haaland's header and Manchester City Danny Gabidon have that precious lead they do and Pep Guardiola would be delighted to go in a half time when they're up because they haven't been at their best Southampton have probably been the better of the two sides but with the quality that they have Erling Haaland we haven't really seen too much of him in that first half but you present a chance to him and nine times out of ten he sticks it in the back of the net unbelievable cross from Kevin De Bruyne and he's just not going to miss from there and that will hurt Southampton because they've done a lot of good things in that first half. What will we'll disappoint Ruben says is that quality in front of goal, that lack of composure. Goals have been an issue for them all season long. And they find themselves 1-0 down. Difficult task now to get back into this one second half, we feel. Erling Haaland back from injury and no surprise, back amongst the goals. Southampton 0, Manchester City 1. Chris, Danny, thank you very much indeed. We'll be back for second half commentary at St Mary's. Uh, here are the Premier League results from this afternoon then. Uh, bad day for both Leicester City and Nottingham Forest. Leicester beaten 1-0 at home by one of their relegation rivals, Bournemouth. So Leicester 19th in the table uh, and Nottingham Forest also beaten 2-0 at Aston Villa. Uh, they are third bottom. Southampton, of course, completing the relegation zone. Whatever happens this afternoon, Manchester United beat Everton 2-0 at the time. 
time. That took them up to third above Newcastle, but then Newcastle replaced them again after their 2-1 come-from-behind victory at Brighton. Uh, Frank Lampard's first game back in charge of Chelsea ended in a 1-0 defeat at Wolves. Let's get the half-time then in the Champions Cup quarter-final. Exeter against Stormers. Chris Jones. First half couldn't have gone much better for Exeter. The lead 21-0, three tries, all of the back three scoring. Wyatt, Noel and Woodburn. The Stormers' preparation for this game was terrible. They didn't arrive in the UK from Cape Town until Wednesday and they barely had a sniff. Exeter excellent. They're 40 minutes away, the Chiefs, from joining Leinster and Toulouse in the semi-finals of the Champions Cup. Exeter 21, Stormers nil. Uh, Chris, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we will get lots of reaction coming up as well shortly uh, to all the goals in the Premier League. Other stories from the rugby. Toulouse beat Sharks to make it through to the semi-finals of the Champions Cup. Two matches in Super League today in the early kickoff. Salford beat Lee 22-20 in the match between the team in third and the leaders. It's Catalan 10, Warrington 14. Uh, we've got the golf on five sports extra from five past eight and at nine o'clock on five live. The Augusta match. Masters, that's where we find correspondent John Murray. Well, the uh, halfway leader, Brooks Kepka, is finally getting his third round underway. He's 12 under par at the halfway stage after the second round was completed this morning. He led by two shots in the end from John Rahm, uh, the big Spaniard. So they'll be playing together, as will the amateur Sam Bennett, who is seven under par, the US amateur champion. And they'll be playing in the third round in groups of three and going out from two tees, the first and the tenth, because of all of the disruption. The uh, the second round was completed this morning in, in steady, sometimes heavy rain. And of course, the fourth and trees of yesterday evening on the 17th were all cleared away and Tiger Woods if you missed it the five times winner made the cut right on the line at three over par he, he's made the cut every time he's played here since he missed it as an amateur back in 1996 so Woods is here for the final two rounds he's just uh, teed off in his third round and uh, one of the main movers uh, in the third round so far is the twice runner-up Justin Rose who's picked up a couple of shots today hold from 20, 23 feet on the first for his birdie followed that up with a birdie at the par 5 second as well so he is 6 under for the tournament 6 shots off the lead and also the world number 4 Patrick Cantley has picked up 3 shots in his third round so far and he is 5 under for the tournament after 7 Thank you, John. John Murray out there at Augusta with our golf correspondent, Ian Carter, Mark Chapman and the rest of the team. Five past eight on Five Sports Extra is when the coverage begins. Right now on Sports Extra, you can listen to live commentary from the British Swimming Championships with John Hunt and the rest of the team. And in the county championship, Hampshire have put down a title marker with a comfortable eight wicket victory over Nottinghamshire. All the reaction to the big stories in the Premier League that we can fit in coming up before second half commentary at St Mary's. Let's get the news now with Richard Foster. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Nicola Sturgeon's promising to cooperate with the police after her husband was arrested during an investigation into the SNP's finances. The former First Minister says recent days have been traumatic. The SNP president says the party's been plunged into its biggest crisis in 50 years. Health leaders say they're more concerned about next week's walkout by junior doctors in England than they have been about any other strike. Up to a quarter of a million operations and appointments could be postponed. Another teachers' union in England is to hold a ballot on possible strike action after 87% of its members voted to reject the government's latest pay offer. The NASUWT, which represents 280,000 staff in the UK, says the offer doesn't address the concerns over pay and working conditions. And Ukraine says it's ready to start exporting electricity again, despite Russia launching more than 1,200 missiles and drones against its energy infrastructure. The attacks began back in October and led to power cuts over the winter. Break into a world of true crime on BBC Sounds. With Lucy Worsley's Lady Killers. This is the story of how an ordinary woman who witnessed the killing of her husband found herself on trial for his murder. And the Lazarus heist. Soon, millions of dollars worth of banknotes are spilling out of cash points around the world. True Crime Podcasts. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sport. Uh, we're going to speak to Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage shortly, but the lines are open for 6.06. You can book your call in now, 08085 909 693. So much to talk about, including Leicester 
in the relegation zone after their 1-0 home defeat to Bournemouth. Their interim manager, Adam Sadler, has been speaking to Rob Nothman. I think the performance today was a disappointing one. I think we have to accept that. But I think there's the reality of the situation is there's there's you can see there's a lack of confidence in the team at this moment in time. So I think my job at this moment is to say to stay really positive and and, and try to make sure that these uh, these players stay united as a group. The players are good players here. So how are you going to get confidence into them? It, it starts and stops with hard work. We have to stay together and we'll get back onto the training pitch next week and, and, and we'll, back, uh, we'll be back to work and, and preparing for, uh, for the game at City next week. In terms of what was happening early on in the game, could you see that they were, in a way, starting so slowly and struggling to keep possession of the ball? But I think that's, that's exactly the point I'm making. Like that, that, that lack of confidence is, is having an effect. And I think the magnitude of the game today was, was, was clearly a, a factor in that. But I thought the response to the second half was better. The substitutions, and you could feel that energy coming into the stadium and, and the team were, were much more on the front foot in respect to performance. So, like I said, it's a, it's a bit disappointing result but uh, nevertheless we have to accept it I think what is important to recognise is that we are in a fight here we've got eight games to try and keep our Premier League survival um, and I think that the message from me and Mike to the players is that you know we have to be up for that fight and, and, and we are and, and, that, and that's where it is that's Adam Sadler, less than 19th after that defeat Nottingham Forest 18th after losing at Aston Villa here's the Forest boss Steve Cooper with Pat Murphy Doing fine in the game, but then to make the changes and then um, after that for an injury to happen and go down to ten men was uh, it's unfortunate. But I'm not saying that's you know I don't want to put all that on on the result. You know we we have we've given away a goal like that the first one and, and not made the most of decent positions in the game. You know that's something you have to look at and go we must do better. And with that going down to ten men, it, we we had rhythm in the game and, and we were getting in you know some good wide areas and, and really felt that we could exploit. And then it just killed all and stifled any sort of momentum we had. Are you now in the situation, Steve, at this stage of the season where when you come in, do you check the scores, the results elsewhere? Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, and we've seen how they've gone, you know. So, um, but that's, that's again, you have to take care of your own business. And when you don't, then sometimes elsewhere goes for you, sometimes it doesn't. So that'll never change, you know. And, um, you know, we're not, we didn't go into today worried about, um, what was going to go on elsewhere. We went in today concerned and focused and mindful of what we do. You know, so um, but of course, yeah, you, you, you look at you know repercussions of losses after games, of course you do, and and also you know when you win a game, the opposite. And look forward, it's uh, mm. Manchester United no next, yeah. Manchester next, and then Liverpool. It doesn't get any easier, does no, it? No, we've got no choice but to look forward and to to get on with it. You know, it's um, it's tough. You know, but um, but life is tough. Elite sport is tough. You know, and uh, we never thought it was going to be easy. But like you said, there's still games to be played and there's still points to be picked up and. Um, sometimes, you know, we can get wins when it's unexpected. They can be the most important and that's what we've got to do. Not much more unexpected than Aston Villa's charge for European football, which continues with that 2-0 victory. Here's their manager, Unai Emery. Those three points can help us to, to be in our target first uh, and really in the top 10. And then to add uh, more option or to be a candidate to, to play for Europe, getting point like today we can have but it's going to be very good because we have continuing and uh, playing with uh, big teams like next week against Newcastle and uh, if we want to get it we can we can we have to improve more than we are doing because uh, we are playing against Newcastle at home we, it's going to be as well top match and uh, maybe more difficult than today and we will need to win if we want to stay and to keep the position for the European position. Big win for Tottenham Hotspur, 2-1 over Brighton this afternoon. Harry Kane got the winner. Son Heung-min scored his 100th Premier League goal. Yeah, amazing, amazing, amazing achievements. I can't believe, to be honest. Uh, I mean, it's, I never told that I'm going to make it. So it's eight season, 100 goals, in the, in the, um, especially in the Premier League, scoring 100 goals. I think it's something special that everyone dreamed for. So it's amazing, amazing, amazing afternoon. The way you held on for the win after taking the lead, did you all learn from the Everton experience? Look, I mean, uh, we can we can uh, stay here of uh, talking about uh, all the mistakes and all the all the situation. Obviously, we had um, tough results against uh, Southampton, tough results against the Everton. So I think sometimes you have to suffer in the last five minutes when you're especially winning against uh, against a good side. So I mean, uh, we were suffering after even last the last second so I think this is a good thing that we have to 
keep this in mind our, our mind so to to suffer for the for the team so i think this will be very very important for the last eight games uh, Hyung Min Son with Jonathan Overend, the first Asian player to score 100 goals in the Premier League. Also in that game, both managers were sent off and Brighton dropped down to seventh position. Celtic are 12 points clear of Rangers at the top of the Scottish Premiership. Thanks to their 3-2 win in the Old Firm derby at lunchtime, Kyogo Furuhashi scored twice. Jota got Celtic's third. James Tavernier scored both of the goals for Rangers. Ange Postacoglu's defending champions closing in on yet another title. It was a derby game, had a bit of everything. Uh... Yeah, it was um, very, very competitive at times. Um, you know, you can't understand the significance of the game, not just in terms of the derby, but for the season. And it's only natural players are going to be on edge a little bit. And I think that showed in our game, but we still control aspects of it. You know, we we kind of were always a threat. Um, yeah, they were a threat from set pieces and caused us some problems there. But, you know, um, overall, you know, you just walk away and, like I said, I'm, I was my, I'm as much a, a sort of uh, onlooker as anyone else in, on, on game day and I, j I just can't help but admire the, the character this group of players shows to find a way every time to get a job done. This group of players has come together and formed a really strong unity and bond and an unshakable belief in, in each other and, and what we're trying to do. And uh, as a manager, you kind of... You obviously analyse the performance and you, and you want to help the team, but that quality they bring to it um, is just outstanding. Loads of really, really good stories to get stuck into on 6.06 tonight. 08085 The lines are open. You can book your call now to speak to Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage. Good evening, James. Thanks so much, Steve. You certainly can. I tell you what, Christopher, you are absolutely raging. Have we seen one of the worst ever displays from officials and VR today? Spurs v Brighton. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, Cover this game today. Brighton were absolutely robbed. Rob, I mean, you know, numerous decisions went against them. The Matoma, the goal, which was deemed out for a handball, in my view, wasn't a handball. He had a, an absolute stonewall penalty. Far didn't even look at it. I don't know why. If you're a Brighton fan, you're absolutely uh, raging. Spurs got away with it. Spurs were, you know, really outplayed by Brighton, underperformed. Uh, they got a, a lucky three points. Manchester United win today. Newcastle won, but for Manchester United, Rashford going off looked like a groin injury. Yep, massive blow, but big three points in the race for those Champions League uh, spots. Want to hear from Chelsea fans, don't we? Frank Lampard, uh, first up for him, a loss uh, against Wolves. And you covered Leicester, Bournemouth. Big rumours doing the rounds. Leicester City that Jesse Marsh mm. is going to be the next manager. Is he really the manager that you want, Leicester City fans? And West Ham United, massive win for, for them at Fulham. And Wonder Heaven fans north of the border, Celtic fans, Ange Postacoglu schooling. Michael Beale schooling. Again, Michael schooling. Beale, yeah. well, oh eight two eight five nine. Find the gap, Rangers. Six nine three. Over to you, Chris Wise and Danny Gabadon. Robbie, thank you very much. Welcome back to St Mary's. The players have just emerged from the tunnel beneath us and Manchester City off the back of a, a relatively serene 45 minutes all round where Southampton will feel that defensively they did more than enough against a Manchester City team who are, of course, trying to chase Arsenal at the top of the table. And then bang, it's De Bruyne, it's Haaland, it's 1-0. And how, Danny Gavidon, do they respond as the second half gets underway with Southampton? Well, they just need to continue doing what they're doing. You know, one nil down, the danger is they go kind of chasing the game a bit more and then the game opens up and that suits Man City and they pick them off and the game quickly goes away from you. But I think Ruben Sayers will be delighted with what he saw in that first half. You'll want to see a bit more composure in front of goal if they can create a couple more chances second half of the quality that we saw in the first half. But I don't think they need to change too much, Chris, to be honest. First chance for Southampton to test Manchester City's defence with the liveliest of them all, Sulemana, low ball in, taken away by Gundogan, who's run himself into a bit of trouble, but he was clipped, it just put him off his stride, and it was spotted by Rob Jones, so Man City have a free kick on the edge of their technical area. Yeah, I think it's Pep Guardiola, I want to see a bit more of a change from his team, even though they won their up, getting that goal just before half-time, and not quite being at their best, we know the importance of this game to Man City as well. So we all want to see an improved performance from his team. Hopefully they can get a second, third goal and really kind of kill this game off and maybe go into cruise control ready for that game against Bayern Munich next week. But 1-0, Southampton still very much in the game. No changes at the break from either. Manchester City have the ball in their own penalty area at the moment with 
Diaz Southampton going from right to left in this second half Bazunu in goal Maitland-Niles Bednarek Bella Kotchap and Walker-Peters in defence Lavia Ward-Prowse and Alcaraz in midfield who has played a little further forward in that first half Elianusi and Sulemana either side and Walcott at times a little more central we'll give you the Manchester City team in a minute but they have possession with Grealish cutting in from the left for Gundogan tries to send it across towards Highland and sliding in at his feet was Bednarek and Manchester City within two minutes of the start of the second half have a corner they're one nil up yeah we know those Man City midfielders De Bruyne does a little bit more than Gundogan but they like to kind of make those penetrating runs just down the kind of the side of the 18 yard box Gundogan on that occasion this, there this making that run minutes. played in by Grealish but Bednarek across quickly on the cover makes a really important interception there the sun is uh, get a, got a little hazy behind the clouds as Manchester City through De Bruyne take this corner met by Bednarek with a fierce header away at the near post back in by Ake and then caught by Bazunu bravely as well because there were one or two Manchester City players around him and he's immediately kicked it upfield towards Walcott who have both Ake and Grealish to contend with and he's won Southampton a free kick even though Jack Grealish is turning to referee Rob Jones and saying I won the ball well they win the ball back quickly Bazunu from the ball that was played in and Walcott's making that run in behind looking to kick the ball over the top and brings the ball down Walcott ball slightly gets away from him just invites the challenge from Grealish sticks that leg in and Walcott goes over it so Southampton with a free kick right of centre it's 10 yards in from the touchline and Ward Prowse is placing it down the Manchester City team by the way Edison, Akanji Diaz, Ake, Rodri Stones, Mares, Gundogan, De Bruyne, Grealish and Haaland who got that first half goal here comes the Saints free kick in by Ward Prowse met by Bella Kocha with his head and a long way over the top of the bar from the German I think he was offside as well they just went early off that Ward Prowse delivery so Southampton nil, Manchester City won in the early stages of the second half at St Mary's. I wonder what's happening in the rugby. Come in, Chris Jones. It's a route, Chris. X to have a fourth try. They're all but in the Champions Cup semi-finals now. Sam Simmons storming through and under the post, brother Joe converting just over half an hour to go. X to 28, Stormers nil. Thanks, Chris. Uh, 6.06, lines are now open if you want to give Chris and Robbie a shout tonight. 08085 909 693. Certainly if you were at or following some of those big Premier League games today it matters down at the bottom of the table in the focus the wins for the likes of West Ham United at Fulham to alleviate some pressure on David Moyes for Bournemouth as well who have heaped it on Leicester City 19th in the Premier League table Leicester City if Southampton were to beat Manchester City here they'll have to come from behind they're trailing 1-0 Leicester City would go to the very bottom as Bednarek puts the ball out of play because Ward Prowse is sat down at the moment, 15 yards inside his own half, and he's holding his right ankle, I think. Well, I think he's just caught off the ball there, Ward Prowse. Challenge in midfield here. I think it was Gundogan with the challenge, and the referee didn't immediately blow up, and in the end, it was Southampton kind of getting the ball back, and Bednarek just kicks the ball out of play and allows play then to be halted. But that's six, seven teams, all we work to do, isn't it, Chris? Between now and the end of the season, to be in the Premier League next season. So it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. He's okay, Ward Prowse. He's back. He's running around again, and play is back underway. And Edison has collected a long ball inside his penalty area. I was just watching. Pep Guardiola Danny down in the technical area he was looking towards the Manchester City subs and he was geeing them up he's almost like you're not doing an intense enough warm-up get moving please Man City are now with Grealish left side of the penalty area support from Gundogan he's got it he's in the box and he's missed by an inch tried to open up his body and bend it into the top left hand corner across for Zunu's goal and it flashed past the left hand post and it's still Southampton nil Manchester City won you have to be honest I was just waiting for the net to bulge ball gets played out to that left hand side Grealish as well against Maitland Niles oh I'm just seeing a replay now it's not too far away either he just comes on the overlap past Grealish and he's just on that slight angle opens that right foot out looking to bend it into that far corner that is inches from that far post 
I was just watching Bazunu's face on that replay as the ball went back past him. And if you could do the little speech bubbles above the head, it would have just said, uh-oh. <laughs> he knew he was in trouble, but Gundogan couldn't squeeze it in. He, of course, scored one of the goals last week against Liverpool in that 4-1 Manchester City win. Here's Grealish again. He's been busy in this game, Jack Grealish, but he's crowded out in the end. And the challenge allows the ball to carry back towards Gavin Bazunu, the former Manchester City player in Southampton's goal. He's done a decent job on him up until this point. Easily making the nulls in his 1v1 situations against Jack Grealish, but seeing a lot of the ball early in this second half, he's going to have to do a continually as, as good a job second half to keep him quiet because he is a man who's in very, very good form, Jack Grealish, right now. And how Ainsley Maitland Niles would love to do one over on Manchester City today, the Arsenal loney really would, uh, I'm sure, see his phone light up from his fellow. Uh, teammates if they were to get something here Southampton and he was central to it they are trailing 1-0 through that Erling Haaland goal right on the stroke of half time made by Kevin De Bruyne his 100th Premier League assist as Walker Peters cuts out the long ball but City who are going from left to right have it with Gundogan and now with De Bruyne and on it goes to the left hand side for Grealish who's on the left hand side of the penalty area back with De Bruyne his shot was closed down by Lavia War Prowse was there too they provided a, a double block really but City pick it up again with Grealish on that left hand side and now with De Bruyne and back with Grealish who puts his studs on the ball gives it to Ake whose pass was wayward of Kevin De Bruyne and uh, then Alcaraz has run himself into Riyad Mahrez. No free kick. And the ball is uh, back with Manchester City on the halfway line. By the way, unless my eyes are deceiving me, I'm sure Riyad Mahrez had pink boots on in the first half because we talked about it. He hasn't now. Here comes Suleiman. Was that a foul by Akanji? No, says the referee. But Saints have it with El Yunusi. A shot from the edge of the box. A bounce. Akanji's a little unsure. And then settling things down as ever. The imperious Rodri to flick it out towards Mares on the right. Yeah, he's definitely had a little switch up on the footway. Riyad Mahrez. Brand Spank, he knew those pink boots he had on in the first half, maybe. The blisters were coming yeah, in. Yeah, quite possibly. Saints have just upped the tempo. Eight and a half minutes into the second half. They're trailing 1-0, but this is the Norwegian El who's heading down towards the byline on this left-hand side. Again, Rodri with that big, broad frame comes over and takes the ball off him. And he's got the throw as well, the Spanish midfielder with that trademark shirt tucked into the shorts. Yeah, a bit of a response from Southampton in the last couple of minutes, though, because I felt Man City has started the second half, the better of the two teams. Just looked a little bit too open, started his second half from Southampton. Can't afford to do that against this Man City side. Really important that when they need to be compact, that they are, and they make it difficult. You can see the second and really can't see a way back for them. Pep Guardiola is going to make a change very early on in this uh, second half. He's going to introduce Bernardo Silva, who is already stripped off and ready to go. As again, Saints scrap through Sulemana to get the ball back. And on this left-hand side, down by the corner flag is Bella Kotchap, of all people. And the centre-half has won Southampton a throw deep inside Manchester City territory. I'm not quite sure he found himself up there. Bella Kotchap but wins a throw for his team. Good hustle, good pressure. High up the pitch from Southampton to... Rob John Stones of the ball there. And St Mary's at capacity, lifting the volumes again for their team, sensing that maybe there is a chance to pierce Manchester City's title charge, but more than anything for them to do their own hopes of survival, the power of good. It's going to be a double Manchester City change. It's not just Bernardo Silva coming on. Kyle Walker's down there as well. We'll come back to that in just a moment. As Bella Kotchup sends the ball forward. Haaland's caught him late on the halfway line. The referee's already got the yellow card in his hand for Erling Haaland. And Bella Kotchup is writhing around at the moment with his face down in the turf. He looks hurt and it is a caution for Manchester City's goal scorer Haaland. Yeah, it was James Ward-Prowse on the ball. Haaland was looking to press him and he then goes after Bella Kotchup after it's Ward Prowse who just nicks the ball to Bella Kotcha and that just invites the, the challenge from Haaland. Bella Kotcha plays the ball forward and then he's just caught on that right ankle. Haaland's just remonstrating with the referee Robert Jones here, but I'm sure he can have too many complaints for the challenge. He was running at pace and did slide in, maybe studs showing slightly. 
Right, those two Manchester City changes. Riyad Mahrez might not have bothered changing his boots because he's off already at the start of the second half. Those fresh white numbers had uh, 11 minutes in total. And also departing John Stones. So Stones has gone off and Kyle Walker has come on. And that's interesting, Danny. And we were talking about this pre-match. I don't know if... Uh, uh, those of you at home or in your cars or wherever you may be this evening caught those comments from Pep Guardiola yesterday saying that at the moment Kyle Walker doesn't fit into this system that I want to play and you just we, we were discussing why Pep Guardiola might have said that you know interesting comments I have to say if I was Kyle Walker hearing the comments from my manager I'm not sure I would have taken it but he has tweaked the system obviously this season, Pep Guardiola, where he's not playing with conventional kind of fullbacks and expecting the fullbacks to play more in the midfield area, which probably isn't so much Carl Walker's game, but I'm not sure I would have appreciated my manager maybe coming out and saying that public that I'm not good enough to play in that position, but on he comes. So I actually thought he might start out today after those comments <laughs> from Pep Guardiola. You're never quite sure what he's going to do or what his intentions are when he comes out and, and says things, but still a fantastic player Carl Walker I think he can play most positions to be honest with you not a problem for him so play finally is uh, back underway because Bella Kotchup was still receiving treatment after that foul by Herland on him on the halfway line and uh, it looks like Manchester City have changed systems as well it appears Carl Walker has gone into that right back berth which will be a, a familiar one for him and he's sent it forward to Bernardo Silva, who's on towards Haaland, on the halfway line, De Bruyne and Grealish scampering forward on the left. Grealish with the low shot, great save for Zunu, but he couldn't deny Grealish the second time. The rebound came back to Jack Grealish, and he's thrusted it into the net, and Manchester City extend their lead over Southampton. They're 2-0 up, and as it stands, they are moving within five points of the Premier League leaders' Arsenal. Nice slick. Slick, quick counter-attacking football for Manchester City and he's the man who's banging form, Jack Grealish. Gets a little bit of luck, a second bite of the cherry. They just get cut open, Southampton, too easy. The turnover of the ball, Harlan gets it under control. A little sideways pass into, I think it's De Bruyne playing the pass again. And Grealish gets the ball quickly in that 1v1 situation. Easily Maitland-Niles. Gets the shot away, Bazuna makes a smart save down to his right. And it comes back to him and he fires it into the roof of the net. Looks like it's going to be possibly checked for a possible offside on Grealish as well as that ball's played into him, Chris. Yeah, we had a, a VAR, potential VAR intervention in the first half for uh, Erling Haaland's goal. We've got one here as well. They're going to draw the line shortly on Jack Grealish to see whether that pass from De Bruyne found Grealish in an offside position he did ever so well the first save is brilliant for Bazuna the goal counts it is 2-0 to Manchester City you feel for Bazuna really because his save was excellent but Grealish was so alert when it came back to him and with his opposite foot he smashed it yeah, into the net really good finish as well looked easy wasn't as easy as he looked as the ball come back out to him quickly the pass from De Bruyne again is fantastic and looks easy but it's not it's the pace and the accuracy of the pass he gets it into Grealish quickly we know Maitland-Niles is quick with his recovery pace but the pace and the accuracy of the pass into the feet of Jack Grealish doesn't really allow him to get back and stop that initial first strike on goal Bazuna makes a smart save and can't get the ball away from the danger zone back to Grealish and it's a really good finish at the second attempt he's looked really bright Jack Grealish as he has done in recent weeks he's on his best run of uh, starts for Manchester City in the Premier League it's 11 consecutive including today and having scored against Liverpool last week, he's got one tonight at St Mary's, 2-0 Manchester City lead. And Ruben Seas, the Southampton coach, is making his first change. It is Elianissi off and the Scottish international Stuart Armstrong on. Yeah, I think from a Southampton perspective, they'll be really disappointed with the goal conceded. Uh, they have seemed a little bit more open this second half and you're looking at the ball going into Haaland's feet. There's nobody within three or four yards of him. He's able to lay the ball off to De Bruyne. There's nobody within three or four yards of him. He's able to get his head up and play that forward ball into Grealish who then finds himself in a 1v1 situation with Maitland-Niles down that side of that 18-yard box. That's where the goal comes from. Southampton not compact enough as a team. And as it stands, they are going to be remaining at the foot 
of the Premier League table tonight with 23 points on what will be 30 games. Here's Kyle Walker-Peters trying to make a difference. Lung-busting run up to the edge of the penalty area. Ran into green and blue traffic in the end, Kyle Walker-Peters. And Rodri has it back for the visitors. You know, he could have shot there, Chris. He really could have as he cuts inside from this left and had the opportunity to let fly with a strike, chose not to. This game's getting stretched now for Southampton. Here's Grealish again up to the edge of the penalty area. De Bruyne on the left, clips it in, Bednarek chucks himself at the ball meets it with his head and nods it behind for a Manchester City corner and that's what happens if you don't complete your attacks against Man City they win the ball back and they go right back down the other end Walker Peters he has the shoot he had the space to shoot he wants another touch he gets crowded out they're then caught with bodies up the field Man City right back down the other end important header from Bednarek there as that ball was fired in so technically he has two assists already Kevin De Bruyne Assist number 100 and 101 if that second one goes down as his as well in the Premier League. And it's his corner from the left towards the near post. He's on a hat-trick of assists now. Headed away by Lavia and picked up by Bernardo Silva who immediately having came off, come off the bench made his mark by helping Manchester City start that attack to get them on their way to their second goal. Haaland and Grealish the goal scorers for Manchester City. And as the sun begins to set behind the flats opposite us behind the stadium Manchester City look like they have this game right where they want it Danny Gabidon yeah 2-0 up and Pep Guardiola just tweaking the system going away a bit from that 3-2-2-3 which didn't really work that well in the first half now playing with Carl Walker a more conventional fullback and you can understand why he's done that there was a lot of spaces in wide areas for Southampton in the first half in particular Suleimana was taking a a lot of advantage of that I think Pep Guardiola just kind of realising that reverting back to a more conventional back four they find themselves 2-0 up and for Southampton they will to an extent want this to not be damage limitation and it comes by uh, Walker missed by Haaland claimed by Bazunu. Southampton nil, Manchester City 2 we've just gone past the hour mark let's see how things are progressing at Augusta coming Ian Carter Good starts in the pouring rain for the top two on the leaderboard. Brooks Kepka with a birdie at the second and John Rahm as well. Two putting from just over 20 feet to remain at 11 under par. Kepka at 13 under par. Looks like it could be a two horse race in the rain this one. And it's the American who leads by two. Thanks Ian. Full coverage on Sports Extra from five past eight and then on Five Live and BBC Sounds from nine o'clock tonight. So Southampton nil, Manchester City 2, 0808 693 if you want to give Chris and Robbie a call about this game, you want to talk about Erling Haaland, maybe Manchester City and the title charge which goes on it seems, Gundogan for Ake and here is Grealish, left hand angle of Southampton's penalty area, every time Jack Grealish gets the ball it appears that Manchester City are going to do something potent with it. It's probably the best I've seen Jack Grealish playing in a Man City shirt and look I think a lot of that is just down to him having a run of games as well. Pep Guardiola's given that responsibility, he's kept him in the team and now he's starting to show exactly what he's about. At the moment Southampton cannot get the ball off Manchester City, Gundogan a lift out towards the left hand side for the equally excellent De Bruyne and now Ake and into the penalty area for Grealish who drags it onto his left foot goes down to the byline clips it in and headed behind by Bella Kutchup Manchester City corner yeah, Grealish again such a difficult man to deal with at times you need to double up there's Ward Prowse looking to try and get across there and, and help the Niles first half did a really good job at him not finding it so easy second half so here comes this Manchester City corner going from left to right in this second half. Goals in either half. De Bruyne's delivery won by Ward Prowse ahead of the Dutchman Nathan Ake. And back on the halfway line in City's possession with Kyle Walker on his 550th club career appearance this evening. Kyle Walker. Rodri taken off him by Alcaraz. That only at the cost of a. Well, I thought it was going to be a. Manchester City throw and I think some of the Manchester City players did as well but the throw has been given Southampton's way instead on the halfway line over on the far side the right and the Saints are going to make a, a couple more changes shortly I can see both Musa Gineppo and Sekumara down there wearing the numbers 19 and 18 respectively 
but Danny Gavidon this is turning slightly into a bit of procession Southampton are just feels like they're about half a yard off Manchester City on every pass yeah not quite the same energy levels and organisation second half to first look they had to work quite hard in that first half to keep Man City at bay a lot of energy a lot of running and they just look slightly off it this second half and the gaps are starting to De Bruyne Bernardo Silva's in great spread by Bazunu the Southampton goalkeeper stood up to Bernardo Silva and takes the ball off his feet touch just slightly getting away from Bernardo Silva and allowed Bazzuni to just make the ground up and make an important save but just caught really open again near Southampton not together as a team the, the front boys are going press in the midfield and not really backing up and just getting sliced open right now the City team uh, starting to enjoy this I guess the mitigating circumstances for Southampton and certain Ruben Sayers might point towards this is that they are without Mohamed Salisu who probably would be a regular in his back line and they haven't got their leading scorer Shea Adams so they're missing key players through injury at either end of the pitch. It never helps but you know, got a big squad of players here at Southampton and that's so go again here. De Bruyne to Grealish on the left. Grealish clips it in. Haaland! Brilliant finish! Overhead finish from Erling Haaland for his second goal and what can Erling Haaland not do? He is capable of everything. Goals in all manners. That is sublime from Erling Haaland. First time, second of the game for him. Manchester City keep on rolling. And with their number nine spearheading things, Southampton nil, Man City three. Outrageous. What a finish this is. He's got so much to do. Crosses behind him. He just adjusts bicycle kick into that far corner Bazuno absolutely no chance but they're just picking Southampton apart now they really are two open Southampton Grealish on his left hand side he just dinks the ball up to that far post to Haaland it's as I say slightly behind him he's got to adjust and the bicycle kick the execution on the strike is outstanding just sends it back across Bazuno where the cross has come from he just can't readjust and make the save, but it's an outrageous finish from an outrageous player. What a goal. And now, one goal away from scoring hat-tricks in three consecutive games, Erling Haaland did it to Leipzig, did it to Burnley. But it isn't going to be one here for Erling Haaland. He is leaving the pitch off the back of scoring two goals. He's applauding the Manchester City fans who are doing the Poznan over towards our right-hand side. But you know that he'll be absolutely furious that that chance of a, a treble treble is denied. Pep, that's, <laughs> that's just cruel. I know he's just coming back from injury, but can't score a goal like that and just get whipped off. Surely, I don't care if it's by Muni next week. He seems all right about it, though. Well, he's, uh, he's smiling, Erling Haaland, but uh, Manchester City now very much in command. 3-0 up at Southampton. Let's go back to the Champions Cup. The rugby, Exeter Stormers, Chris Jones. Well, two Stormers tries, Chris, have just made Sandy Park a little nervous. First Springbok, Damien Phillips, uh, then a breakaway from Suleiman Hartzenberg. But Exeter still has a healthy lead with just over 15 minutes to go. The Champions Cup semi-finals awaits. Exeter 28, Stormers 10, 15 to go. Southampton nil, Manchester City 3 20 minutes to play at St Mary's as well and uh, for Haaland who leaves the pitch we must talk about the disappointment that no doubt Julian Alvarez would have felt at having been left out today because he's come on to replace Haaland but he was brilliant against Liverpool last week but was the, the full guy here yeah I mean the options that Pep Guardiola has at his disposal it's an embarrassment of riches really whoever comes into the team it's kind of almost like for like quality it's going to be no easier for the Southampton backline now Alvarez is on the pitch oh Southampton who have uh, made a couple of changes that we mentioned earlier Mara and Gineppo uh, are both on for Saints but this now is becoming a, a very taxing Saturday evening for Southampton who are and are going to remain I think we can say with some conviction bottom of this Premier League table on Easter weekend yeah, they just lost their discipline really second half first half I thought they were very good you know disciplined organized they, the shape was good they looked a threat on the counter-attack but 
Second half has just looked a little bit all over the place. It's been too open. The team not kind of compact, not pressing together at the right times. And you just can't do that against a team with a quality that Man City have. They just kind of pick you off and 3-0 now. The game's quickly gone away from them. And the bad news for Southampton is Manchester City look like they are in the mood for more as well. There may be a, a case a little later where they'll be preserving some of the energy in the legs with thoughts of that game against Bayern Munich on Tuesday night in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. You can hear it live here on Five Live. And we're just getting the shot of Erling Haaland on the bench who is taking a, a sip of water from his bottle. He's got his hair tied back, his legs crossed and he's removing his shin pads. He's not smiling but he doesn't look particularly angry either. Here comes Southampton who are still looking for their first goal of the evening two from Haaland one from Grealish from Manchester City Gineppo oh he's gone past three players Gineppo with the tee off Mara's finished Saints have got one back and it's the two substitutes who have made it Gineppo went past four Manchester City players and a little sideways pass to Seiko Mara who scored against Manchester City in the League Cup in January and now has his first Premier League goal and it's against the champions as well. Life perhaps to Southampton. Southampton 1, Manchester City 3. Yeah, shows good composure with the finish, the substitute, Mara. Gineppo, fantastic feat to get inside that 18-yard box. Looked like he'd been tackled about three times but still managed to keep the ball. And then just thinking he's going to maybe try and shoot himself, but shows really good intelligence, just the laidable square, just around the penalty spot to Mara, and he just side foots the ball low into the far corner. Lifeline for Southampton, did not see that one come in. And it's just lifted the atmosphere again inside St Mary's. So Manchester City still perhaps have a bit of work to do. 3-1 the scoreline, but in their favour. And Grealish has got it with De Bruyne over on that far left-hand side two-thirds of the way inside Southampton's half this is Rodri now De Bruyne turning facing up towards goal Alvarez back towards De Bruyne the challenge on him it's a Manchester City penalty a stretch for the ball which was not made the contact was on De Bruyne it was Walker Peters I think who was sliding in desperately to stop that fluent Manchester City attack and no sooner had Southampton got themselves back in the game, Manchester City have a spot kick. Yeah, he just got Manchester City angry. 100% penalty. Just panics Walker Peters. Lovely play on the edge of the 18-yard box. De Bruyne gets played in. Sandwiched between two players. And Walker Peters, I've been in that situation where, you know, you just feel that he's going to score and you just have to dive in there and try and make a tackle. But he's never going to get there. De Bruyne just nicks the ball away from him and he just wipes him out. 100% penalty. Penny for the thoughts of Erling Haaland. Oh, he's fuming. Absolutely fuming. This would have been his moment for another hat-trick. Instead, it looks like it's going to be Julian Alvarez who's going to take this penalty. Haaland's not on the pitch. Riyad Mahrez isn't on the pitch. Gundogan's just had a little conversation with the Argentinian. But Julian Alvarez stands over this penalty with the Manchester City fans behind the goal and a chance for Manchester City to extend their lead to three once more at St Mary's. Alvarez. Only Haaland's got more goals than him for City and he's got another one straight down the middle from Julian Alvarez. Bazunu went to his right hand side and that brief flicker of hope for Southampton is eliminated immediately. Alvarez with the penalty that was won by De Bruyne and it's Southampton 1, Manchester City 4. Yeah, the instant response from Man City. Clever penalty from Alvarez down the middle. Generally keepers dive to the left or the right, so it's generally a safe penalty. Gundogan, normally the man that might step up in that situation, but relinquishing responsibility, giving it to Alvarez and he sticks it in the back of the net. Southampton just looking like they might have a lifeline in this game. And they've quickly been killed off with a fourth. 14th goal in all competitions for Julian Alvarez. He has had a brilliant season amongst all the headlines about Haaland and, and rightly so. He has continued to, to score goals on a frequent basis for Manchester City and has ultimately proved to be the, the perfect backup for Erling Haaland. Yeah, had a brilliant World Cup as well. Julian Alvarez and Obviously Pep Guardiola allowing Raheem Sterling to leave the club who'd been such an important player over the, the last few seasons. Really important to get a replacement in for him. 
and he's fitted the bill Alvarez and it's not just the quality that he has but it's the work rate kind of off the ball as well play different positions fantastic player oh they're really stretched here Southampton Manchester City on the charge Bernardo Silva De Bruyne this could be five pulled back for Silva saved by Bazunu and then clipped away by Walker Peters and then it's just pumped out of play by Lavio I think he's got a bit of a problem himself he's down injured Southampton have got Maitland-Niles rolling around inside the six-yard box as well that so easily could have been five for City yeah this could get ugly you really could if they're going to be or continue to be this open Southampton it's a little bit of a tame finish wasn't it from Bernardo Silva in the end there's about two or three Southampton players that get back on the line but probably needs to lift that into the roof of the net not sure where it hits in the end is it Bednarek or Bazunu yeah I think it is Bednarek who was sort of lunging simultaneously with Bazunu yeah. really trying to to double team tag the Bernardo Silva effort he's having a, a conversation with Kevin De Bruyne now both are smiling but Bernardo Silva is almost saying I don't really know how I haven't scored yeah well De Bruyne again you know that kind of trademark run where he just overlaps and the side the yard box gets played in and he just squares it across goal and you're just expecting with the quality that Bernardo Silva has that he'll find a corner just hitch it centrally a little bit of a tame finish really and it Bedrick manages to get a block on it he's gets himself back on the line but this could get ugly Chris really could well it's already 4-1 but it doesn't look like Southampton are looking to shut up shop and not concede anymore no and they've got two players down injured one has just got back to his feet that's uh, Maitland-Niles but it looks like Lavia is uh, is still down is it Lavia that's down I can't quite see there's so many people around him and he's been treated by a couple of members of Southampton's physio team as well uh, so while he's receiving treatment, let's uh, give you the number for 606 with Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage tonight. Give us a call. Let us know what you think of this Manchester City display and whether they are capable of reeling Arsenal in. 08085 909 693 85058 on the text. Five Live Sport, if you search for that on Twitter and on Instagram, on the socials. It is Lavia, I can confirm that now, who is... Uh, receiving treatment and I think Southampton are going to be forced into a change here because it looks like Roman Perro, the Frenchman is down and is uh, is uh, is stripped off I should say and is about to come on so with the scoreline Southampton 1 Manchester City 4 as we move towards the final 10 minutes let's find out the latest uh, the Masters off to Augusta we go Ian Carter couple of interesting moves being made one by the 52 year old Phil Mickelson who's just birdied the sixth to get to six under par just ahead of him Colin Morikawa playing the fifth has got it to seven under but the leaders are out in front Brooks Kepka 13 under par with John Rahm at 11 under Ian thank you very much full coverage tonight from nine o'clock on five live uh, and it all begins on five live sports extra from five past eight after the British swimming championships which you can hear right now on five live sports extra from sheffield are you a golfer danny do you play i try <laughs> <laughs> i'm better watching it than actually playing it to be honest with you but um yeah i love my golf you'll be glued will you to uh, to five lives coverage over the next couple of days i certainly will right so let's have a look at these uh, these saints changes then i i think it's both the players actually who picked up those knocks lavia is uh, is definitely departing and it is Ibrahima Diallo who is coming on for him. Well, I thought it might be Maitland Niles, but actually it appears that it's going to be Theo Walcott who is making way for Roman Perro. And if ever I've, I've seen a change from a, a coach to try and pull the drawbridge up and stop the assault that's one walk up the forward off when you fall one down and Perro a defender on yes yeah, been too open just looking at the medical staff they were kind of signaling straight over that Neil Lavi had to come off so they'll be hoping that injury isn't too serious because he's an important player for them in that midfield area and City making a couple of subs as well Calvin Phillips one of them coming on yeah so this is the the luxury now for Pep Guardiola can uh, rest a couple of players Rodri is departing and so is Nathan Ake so we're going to see Calvin Phillips who's only made a couple of starts for Manchester City since his move from Leeds United he actually started the League Cup defeat here in in January and also on as well is the Spanish under 21 international Sergio Gomez the left back who's making his seventh Premier League substitute appearance and he has replaced Nathan Ake 
And by the looks of it, he's wearing Riyad Mahrez's boots from earlier. <laughs> exactly the same ones, isn't he? Gloriously pink. And his first um, first job is with those boots to clear it away from the edge of the Manchester City penalty area. The ball is looped back towards it once more. Then a powerful header downfield from Akanji. And a little collision between... Uh, who was that? Bella Kochup and Bednarek, the two centre-halves coming together. Mizunu sweeps it out to that far right-hand side. Gundogan has it back for Manchester City, who are 4-1 up at St Mary's. And we are inside the final eight and a half minutes. Danny Gabbard. Yeah, I think what you would say from a Southampton point of view is if they can kind of play with the, the energy and the quality they did in the first half, then they're going to pick up points in the games after this one. There's always going to be a bit of a free hit against Man City. If you can get a result, then fantastic. But you can show the quality that they showed in the first half and a bit more composure in front of goal and more than capable of picking up points and winning games second half not so good where they've just lost their discipline a little bit and it's played a little bit too open but a lot of positives from that first half in particular that they can take into the remaining game still have Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, Fulham and Liverpool to come here to St Mary's Southampton and they will in particular look at those next two Palace and Bournemouth and, and feel like almost feel like two wins are a must yeah they've got Forest coming up as well so teams you know, around them relegation scrap so those will be the games they'll be really be targeting and essentially pick up points in them Bernardo Silva drifting past a couple of players on this right hand side and then gave the ball away to Ward Prowse and Southampton with Gineppo who made that goal for Mara where Southampton made it 3-1 for a couple of minutes at least before the Manchester City penalty we got them back on track again and they are going to be five points behind Arsenal they'll be on the same number of games but of course Arsenal play tomorrow against Liverpool you can hear it on Five Live Sport as part of our Premier League Sunday Leeds against Crystal Palace is our game from two o'clock and the other note to make about what's going on at the top of the table is that Manchester City's goal difference is now five better than Arsenal's and who knows, these, those two have still got to play each other as well. De Bruyne on the right hand side, his cross is cut out by Diallo and back with Gavin Bazunu. 4-1 to Manchester City. Let's go back to Exeter Stormers, Chris Jones. Exeter into the Champions Cup semi-finals, a rolling wall try scored by last week's hero Jack Yeendall, met by deafening Sandy Park celebrations. Four minutes to go, Exeter 35, Stormers 10. Cheers, Chris. Six minutes to go here at St Mary's. I'm just looking around. There are a few red seats that are beginning to uh, appear, Danny. No surprise to see that Manchester City section over towards our right in the in the northern stand is still packed to the rafters. They're stood up. They are chanting. They are cheering. And one or two flags have been unveiled over there as well. I think Pep Guardiola will be much more pleased now don't think he was happy with that first half performance he obviously of course would have been really pleased that they were able to go in one goal to the good at half time but second half has been much better a little bit of that has been down to Southampton and how open they have been as a team and what is that now is that 21 goals in, the, in four games yeah Ridiculous. 21 in their last four Manchester City in all competitions it is a, a frightening record two from Haaland here First didn't arrive until right on the stroke of half-time from the Norwegian, but Grealish, Haaland again, and Alvarez with that penalty in the second half. Brief hope for Southampton, provided by substitute Sekumara. But at the moment, Manchester City with the ball, with Gundogan, just inside Southampton's half, and Calvin Phillips back towards Ruben Diaz on the halfway line. Here's Phillips again with the hair tied up in the barn at the back. He's just waiting for Mara to come and engage. There's no hurry at all from Manchester City now. They are trying to expend as little energy as possible. Yeah, might with just all leave it at on four. Munich. Might just leave it at four. Man City tend to do this. They, they don't fully embarrass you at times when they they're more than capable of doing so. Probably feel maybe four is enough. Let's just conserve, save energy now with a big game coming up in the Champions League. By Munich Tuesday night. It's live on five live and we'll have coverage of Chelsea against Real Madrid as uh, Frank Lampard uh, returns 
to Chelsea. He was beaten today at Wolves, but that will be his first Champions League game. Here is City with Walker, and now Bernardo Silva just inside the box, lifted up to the far post, headed away by Bednar X. Stuart Armstrong's let that ball bounce. He's under pressure from Kevin De Bruyne, also with the number 17 on his back. He's forced Stuart Armstrong down into the corner, and his clearance is given possession back to Manchester City. Calvin Phillips has it, 15 yards outside the box. Now with Bernardo Silva, the Portuguese, who is spinning around looking for options to the right-hand side for Walker. His pass is cut out by Perro, and then back off Walker and out of play for a Southampton throw near left-hand side. And there is less than three minutes to go and the only voices you can hear, Danny Gabidon, are those of Manchester City supporters. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a difficult one if you're a Southampton supporter. They would have been really pleased with what they saw from their team in the first half and the way that Southampton kind of went about things, they got the crowd involved, didn't they? The crowd were right kind of behind the team. Always going to be difficult against this Man City side. Though. I've been there myself. I've experienced these type of games where you feel you've got a foothold in the game. You feel that you're holding your own and then just one bit of quality and then the game can quickly go away from you when you go chasing the game. So uh, this is one that Southampton will have to park quite quickly. 606, sorry Danny, 606 I was just going to say is on the way next. Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage with you. 08085 999 693 85058 if you want to drop them a text. Maybe you were uh, at that crazy game between Spurs and Brighton today where Brighton will certainly feel and the boys were talking about it at half time about the controversy involving VAR in that game and of course we had the bust up between De Zerbi and Stellini as well the two coaches so I'm sure anyone who was uh, who was there Chris and Robbie would love to hear from you to talk about that yeah, I'm pretty sure VAR is supposed to do the opposite isn't it it's supposed to get rid of all the controversy but that was the plan initially I think anyway there's Bernardo Silva right hand side for Manchester City halfway inside Southampton's half they're leading by four goals to one and they are keeping the ball with complete precision and control at the moment Manchester City going from left to right as they see this game out as St Mary's to keep them on track to closing that gap to Arsenal this is Kyle Walker on a substitute in this second half of Manchester City gives the ball away and Bella Kochup goes back to Bazunu to clear elsewhere today Manchester United 2 Everton 0 Villa 2 Forest 0 Brentford 1, Newcastle 2, Fulham 0, West Ham 1, big win for West Ham, massive 1-0 win for Bournemouth as well at Leicester, so if you are a, a Cherries fan or indeed a fan of the Foxes, give Chris and Robbie a call tonight, as we were saying, Spurs 2, Brighton 1, in that incident-filled game in North London, and Frank Lampard's big return to Chelsea did not go as planned, Wolves 1, Chelsea 0, give us a call tonight, Chelsea fans, 08085 909 693 and right now Manchester City with the ball and a 4-1 lead and Southampton's body language is yeah. dejected and beaten. You, yeah you can understand that Chris it's such a difficult team to play against particularly if you're one of the lesser sides in this division you know you look at what they did to Liverpool last weekend a similar scoreline they do it against the very best as well they're just so well oiled quality in every area obviously the way they play the way they're coached and you've got Erling Haaland leading the line they're just so difficult to deal with they really are two goals for Erling Haaland Grealish and Alvarez with the others for Manchester City 4-1 they lead as we move towards stoppage time and Manchester City keeping the ball on that far left hand side they have it with Calvin Phillips who has gone for the big 60 yard switch out towards Walker on this right hand side down with his head towards Bernardo Silva back with Walker and then back to the feet of Grealish who's a bit deeper now with those uh, dropped socks down towards either ankle manoeuvring his way forward cut out by Gineppo who's then lost it to Bernardo Silva who has wriggled away from one of the Southampton substitutes Ibrahim and Diallo and still he's somehow managed to pirouette his way from another Bernardo Silva this is magical stuff from the Portuguese and in the end the magic ran out and Gineppo takes it away from him and he's been caught by Bernardo Silva Southampton free kick and they're just capable of hurting you in so many different ways Man City they kill you with possession of the football they have that counter attacking threat and now the ability to score goals from crosses from wide areas with Haaland in the team they can go back to front a bit more with him in the team as well with the pace that he has just impossible to deal with when they're at their best there's not many teams in the world really that can that can cope with them 
is it their year to win the Champions League though we're not sure what's going to happen in the Premier League they've got some ground to make up but it's that Champions League that Pep Guardiola's really after as well he's hardly left his seat Pep Guardiola in the second half he hasn't really needed to since that Jack Grealish goal that made it 2-0 the game has felt like it was in a grip of Manchester City that was not going to be relinquished and they move forward again with speed and control on that left hand side with Jack Grealish we're in four minutes of stoppage time and of course Southampton will stay bottom of the Premier League with their 23 points from 30 games could they be one of the three that drop down to the championship to end an 11 year stay in England's top flight here comes City again with Gomez down the left and it's taken off his toes and behind for a Manchester City corner and of course we do now know one team that will be coming up to the Premier League next season after Burnley's promotion last night led so masterfully by Vincent Company, of course the former Manchester City defender that corner's been taken short by Manchester City lifted in by De Bruyne oh it's missed from what six yards out who was lurking there Alvarez or Phillips yeah Calvin Phillips I think it was De Bruyne with a cross again I don't really know how Calvin Phillips has missed that well give Danny Gavidon a quick chance to have a look at the replay in a moment while we nip back to the rugby Exeter Stormers Chris Jones Exeter into the last four of the Champions Cup they've won 42-17 damage done in the first half as the Chiefs took advantage of a lethargic Stormers to lead 28-0 and even though the Stormers came back in the second half tries from Jack Yeadle and Tom Cairns put gloss on the Exeter win questions will be asked Chris about the travel issues that meant the Stormers only arrived here on Wednesday but the Chiefs were good value for this and they will now face either La Rochelle or Saracens in the semi finals of the Champions Cup extra 42 Stormers 17 thank you Chris I'll tell you one set of people who will not be bothered at all about their travel plans tonight Manchester City supporters it doesn't matter how long or how late they get back to Manchester tonight it will be a another very enjoyable journey home for Man City's 3,000 or so fans that have made this long trip down to the south coast on this Easter weekend this Saturday night on five live and on BBC Sounds and Manchester City continue to hold on to the ball to not let Southampton get anywhere near it. I'm not sure a Southampton player has touched the ball more than three times in the last six or seven minutes, Danny. Yeah, it's just a keep ball session now. Southampton just trying to hold some kind of shape. Quite happy to let Man City have the ball and not concede any more goals, I think. Comprehensive second half performance on Man City. Not sure what Pep Guardiola said at half time, but I don't think he was fully happy with the first half. But he's got the response he was looking for. Four goals tonight for Manchester City against Southampton, just like they did in the reverse fixture. They didn't concede in that one, they beat them 4 0 back in October. One point of note is Manchester City still have not kept successive Premier League away clean sheets all season. That perhaps is an area of concern, but only a minor one for Manchester City, who continue their pursuit of Arsenal at the top of the Premier League they are not letting them out of their sight the gap for tonight at least is back down to five points two goals from Erling Haaland the others from Jack Grealish a penalty from Julian Alvarez the substitute Sekumara got Southampton's goal but in truth Danny Gavidon this is a night that belongs once more to Manchester City yeah I think big game for both teams wasn't it always going to be a difficult one for Southampton the form that Man City are in and that was a real comprehensive performance, particularly second half for Man City. Not quite at the races first half. Credit to Southampton. I thought they were probably the better of the two teams. Didn't take the chances presented to them. And that Haaland goal was a big one just before half time. And we didn't really see the same kind of organisation, discipline and energy levels from Southampton second half. And Man City took full advantage of that. Look, they're a fantastic outfit. I think they've got to take the positive from that first half performance, Southampton, and take it into remaining games. If they play with that kind of energy and quality in the first half, they showed in the first half, I think they're capable of picking up points, but they need to start doing it quickly because the games are running out, Chris. And that, that, that. But that game next week here against Crystal huge. Palace feels enormous, doesn't it? Huge game, huge game, it really is. You know, a team in and around them a little bit down the bottom. They've obviously got Bournemouth coming up, Forest in there as well. You know, this was a free hit today, really. To get anything from this uh, would have been a bonus for Ruben Sayers. And look, they weren't able to do that. Come off their level second half, and they were punished by a, a top, top team. But you'll look at it, you'll take the positives from that first half, as I said. 
and that's the kind of level you'll want to see uh, going into the remaining games if they can play you know 90 minute performances at that level I think they're capable of picking up points but I think the relegation battle is going to go right down to the wire because there's six seven teams all still in trouble so uh, it's going to be an interesting end of the season really is Danny really enjoyed your company tonight thank Cheers, you very Chris, much pleasure. Da Danny Gabidon former Premier League defender with us here at St Mary's Pep Guardiola right now over applauding those Manchester City supporters Southampton remain bottom of the Premier League table in 20th and Manchester City still second but that little bit closer to Arsenal tonight. We'll bring you reaction from here as we get it into 6.06. But for now, it's finished Southampton 1, Manchester City 4. Over to you, Chris and Robbie. Thanks so much, Chris and Danny Gabadon. So, Christopher.